So today we are looking at the Jekyll and Hyde fighter from the Unmatched series of games. Now Jekyll and Hyde is one of the characters from the Cobble and Fog set. Jekyll and Hyde is a story about mild-mannered Dr. Jekyll who starts experimenting with some various different potions and finds one that will change him from nice guy Jekyll to mean guy Mr. Hyde. Now, why would you want to be Mr. Hyde? Well, because Mr. Hyde is more fun. I mean, Mr. Hyde does crazy stuff and it's fun. And Dr. Jekyll finds himself turning into Mr. Hyde for the fun of it more and more as the story goes on. But as he keeps turning into Mr. Hyde, he kind of keeps losing himself in there until eventually Mr. Hyde just completely consumes him and that is all he is now. So the Jekyll and Hyde fighter in the Unmatched game is very much themed off of having that split persona between Jekyll and Hyde. We see that they use green as a main color for Jekyll and Hyde. So everything that we have here is green with black on it. So here on Jekyll and Hyde's card, we see that he is a melee fighter with a health of 16. He has no sidekick because he's kind of his own sidekick. You start the game as Dr. Jekyll. At the start of your turn, you may transform to Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. While Mr. Hyde, after you maneuver, you take one damage. So just like in the story, being Mr. Hyde had its negative effects on Jekyll. It is the same here in the game. We see that we have this nice little token here to show you if you are Dr. Jekyll or if you are Mr. Hyde. And Mr. Hyde has the friendly reminder here that you lose one health after you maneuver. So what we will see here in Jekyll and Hyde's deck is that there are cards in here that are specifically for Jekyll and cards in here that are specifically for Hyde um, along with the Ennies. And the cards that are with each of those characters kind of thematically match what is going on with them. So we'll start with Jekyll's cards, then show you Hyde's, and then go into the Ennies, and then we'll kind of talk about the makeup of the deck a little bit. Dr. Jekyll, a defense of four with haste. After combat, move Dr. Jekyll up to four spaces. Scientific method, a defense of two. After combat, draw a number of cards equal to the damage you were dealt. Succumb to compulsion, a versatile card of two. After combat, move up to two spaces and transform to Mr. Hyde. Distracted triage, a versatile of three. After combat, if you won the combat, recover two health. A scheme, calming research, recover two health, draw up to three cards, keep one and put any others on the bottom of your deck in any order. Now we'll go into Mr. Hyde's cards. Forever Hyde, an attack of five. During combat, you may discard Dr. Jekyll cards. Add two to this card's value for each card discarded. Recoiling Blow, an attack of five. Place Mr. Hyde in any space in his zone and transform to Dr. Jekyll. Madness Relents, a versatile of four. Transform to Dr. Jekyll after combat. We get into Hyde Schemes. Pure Evil, place Hyde in any space in his zone. Mr. Hyde deals two damage to all adjacent fighters. Three of those. Strange Case, that's taking its name from the original story, which is the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Reveal the top card of your deck. Deal damage equal to its boost value to one adjacent fighter. Put the card in your hand. Then we get into the Ennies. Duality of Man, and this is thematically one of my favorite cards in any character's deck. If you are Dr. Jekyll and playing this card to defend, this card's value is 6 instead. If you are Mr. Hyde and playing this card to attack, this card's value is 6 instead. So it's a much more powerful card if it's used um, either defensively with Jekyll or as an attack with Hyde. 
Then into some of the regular cards here we're familiar with. Skirmish, if you want to combat, choose one of the fighters in the combat, move them up to two spaces. That's a versatile of four. And faint, versatile of two, immediately cancel all effects on your opponent's cards. So, what do we have going on here with these cards? Well, let's take a look at Dr. Jekyll's deck here. We see that Dr. Jekyll's deck is made up of defense cards, of versatiles, and schemes. So Dr. Jekyll has no attack cards. He just has to use the versatiles either from here or from the innies. Hyde has attack cards, versatiles, not very many versatiles, and schemes. So he has no defense cards, just attacks and schemes. All of Hyde's schemes are about doing damage to people. Jekyll's schemes are about recovering health and drawing cards. And we also see here on the any cards that they are all versatiles and there are no attacks or defenses or schemes in the innies. So we see that Jekyll has a very defensive deck in general. And we see that Hyde has a very offensive deck in general with the any cards being versatiles in there. So Jekyll is the one that's able to move around freely and able to defend and take up a lot of damage because he does have some very strong defense cards. Fours are very good defenses. And he gets some threes in there on um, some versatiles. And we have some pretty good after combat effects on all of his cards there that are very good. We see that Hyde just has some really big hitting cards. I mean, he has four fives right there on his attacks. With Forever Hyde being able to be boosted quite a bit if it doesn't get fainted, these are really just some massive, massive hard-hitting cards there. And Duality of Man, which can be used um, as either a really huge hit of six or a very good defense of six, which defending with six is really great. Um, that makes a very good defense card because there tend to not be a lot of offensive things thrown at you um, for canceling effects. Most people don't throw faints out um, as attacks, although it can be done. Really, you're going to spend most of the game kind of running around as Jekyll, and you've got to find the right times to turn into Hyde. Obviously, if the opponent leaves their fighter just sitting right next to you, that's a great time to switch over and just wallop on them because you're not having to maneuver. They're just right there next to you. Most of them are going to try not to do that a lot, um, but sometimes they may have to move up to you. Um, you can try to make them come after you. There's some characters like Bruce Lee and Robin Hood um, or any of the other ranged fighters that are just going to sit back and make you have to come to them. So if you're going to have to maneuver to someone, you got to pick the right time to do it because you're going to take a health hit to do that. One thing you may want to think about doing if you are Jekyll and Hyde is switching to Hyde then boosting your maneuver. Go ahead and take that health hit because sometimes you just got to do it. But boost your maneuver and get up to them real close. Um, that's one way to do it. You also have the um, pure evil card which lets you just move up to any space in the zone. So as long as you're close to them and you get this, you can play that, move up to them, deal two damage, and that would be... Um, pretty bad on its own there, but then if you had like a Forever Hide or a Recoiling Blow, either of those would be real good to place there. Um, one thing to think about if you are going to leave Jekyll and Hyde up next to someone when you are Hyde and you're ending your turn as Hyde, you need to make sure that you've got good defensive cards um, or some good versatile cards that you can use um, as Hyde. You either need to have Hyde's um, 
bad this relent cards or have some of these other ones in here um, particularly your skirmishes and feints um, duality a man can be used defensively as hide but it definitely lacks a lot of its punch if you do that so you want to maneuver in as hide and hit and ideally you want to do that early while you have a lot of health so you can afford to do it one thing that can really be an undoing for Jekyll and Hyde um, and this is um, something you won't necessarily have control of is if these four cards right here your big hitters for Hyde come along really late into the game if these are hanging around the bottom of your deck you may be pretty weak by the time you get them and then not be able to maneuver as hide because if you've only got two or three health it's really quite risky to start running around and maneuvering as hide you want to do that early in the game when you have a lot of health so if you get these you want to go after them early um, even if these get fainted um, you still get a lot of um, hits on them just by virtue of them being a five. You also want to think about what you're going to do if they pull something a little sneaky on you, such as if you're playing um, a recoiling blow and end up being um, having that fainted so you don't change into Jekyll. Let's say you play this on your first turn and then you plan on changing to Jekyll and getting out of there. Um, you need to think about what you're going to do because now you're going to be hide an extra turn. You may not be able to um, do anything except maneuver. Um, also, if they play a defense card that gives them movement that can leave you stuck as hide without being able to do anything except maneuver. If you don't have any scheme cards and your opponent moves away from you where they're not adjacent um, you've either got a maneuver or scheme so that's one good defense against hide is um, any cards that give you movement um, either for hide or yourself um, hide doesn't take a health hit for being a move by card effect it is just by a maneuver um, and even if he stays put and maneuvers to just draw a card, that is still a maneuver and that is still um, giving you a health hit. So really, Jekyll and Hyde is going to be a more difficult character to be able to figure out. You've really got to be able to think about what you're doing and mistakes are going to be much more damaging to you than they would be for other characters you know if you're running around as like bigfoot or something or even someone like alice mistakes are not as damaging um, it's also a little bit easier for your opponents to figure out what you are going to do because if you switch to hide they know that you're just going to be using you know some of these cards here and while that's true of sidekicks that they know you're you know running with a smaller deck with sidekicks um you are with as jekyll or with hyde you're limited in the types of cards that you're going to be playing and so they if they are familiar with the jekyll and hyde deck they're going to be much more likely to figure out what you are going to try to do so he's a difficult character to figure out he can be um frustrating to play um, but he can also be fun to play if you like a challenge because it's not an impossible challenge with him you can definitely do really well with Jekyll and Hyde it's just going to be um, a lot more difficult to pull it off well and mistakes getting stuck as Hyde when you don't want to be Hyde will be very damaging to you but anyway, that is a look at the Jekyll and Hyde deck. If you have any other thoughts about this character, you can leave them down in the comments. You can also give this video a thumbs up and a like if you liked it. And you can subscribe to my channel to make sure you catch all of my videos. And also make sure you take a look at all the other character videos that I've got so you can learn more about them.